Gades. Gades, an island separated from Turdetania by a narrow canal. This is how geographer Strabo described the unique character of Cadiz. For the Romans, Gades was a legendary city whose name was widely known throughout the empire due to its antiquity and its active port. Strabo also wrote, thanks to the courage shown by its inhabitants in all things related to the sea and their adhesion to the Romans, the city's fortune has increased so much in all areas that despite its location in a remote land, it is the most famous of them all. We arrive in Cadiz by following the Roman Beatico route from Marchena. With the construction of new roads, the cities are now 106 kilometers apart, but during the Roman period, the distance would have been somewhat larger, 125 miles. Thus, traveling from Marcia to Gades would have taken a person six days. Whereas the journey from modern-day Marchena to Cadiz now takes no longer than an hour and three quarters. Cadiz marks the end of the Via Augusta. However, only one milestone has been found in the province. It dates from Nero's period and it was located in a section of the road leading from Jerez to the river Guadalete. Alongside the section of the road which stretched from Asderechia near to Jerez to Gadis, there were two mansions which offered travelers accommodation, warm food and rest for the horses. In in the vases of Vicareo, which lists all the posts from Rome to Cadiz, the city is referred to as Ad Portum, whilst in another direct source about the places through which the road passed, the Antoninus itinerary, Portus Gaditanus, is mentioned as one of the route's points. However, neither source gives a clear indication to the exact location of the Portus. The last of the mansions on the Via Augusta was situated 12 miles from Gades. Archaeological findings place Ad Pontum in Caño Carbonero, very near to Sancti Petri, and from there the Via Augusta followed a straight path to Cadiz. On this narrow peninsula, which is only just above sea level, once stood the Phoenician temple of Melkart, dedicated to the worship of the Greek deity Heracles, the Latin Hercules. The famous columns that led to the entrance of the temple were situated on a plain which is today submerged under the sea. Illustrious visitors like Hannibal, Scipio and Julius Caesar were able to admire the sanctuary which was regarded by many as the ultimate reward for their long journey. The Heraklion is on the other side, towards the east, on the site where the island is nearest to dry land, from which it is only separated by a canal with a width of one stadium. Strabo's texts provide one of the most valuable sources when exploring the distant past of the area. According to the classics, Cadiz was founded in the year 1100 BC. Since those times, its special topographic characteristics and strategic situation made it an important port. In the year 206 BC, the local population associated itself with Rome, and the city started to be called Gadis, derived from the Phoenician name Gadir. Caesar granted the city Roman citizenship, and years later, Augustus turned it into the capital of one of the four jurisdictional convents of Beatica, naming it Augusta Urbs 
Apulia Gaditana. Despite its limited size, Cadiz had the infrastructure and monumental character of any large Roman city. Balbus the Minor was responsible for the construction of most of the city's monuments. Lucius Cornelius Balbus was an illustrious politician born in Cadiz, who became the first provincial senator and proconsul of Africa. Balbus the Gaditano, who achieved all the honors of triumph, built another one, which they call the New One. He promoted the extension and development of the city into the new one, that Strabo refers to in his writings. Amongst the new buildings was a theatre. The Roman theatre in Cadiz was discovered in 1980, during research being carried out in the popular quarter studying the medieval citadel. Since then, and right up to now, research has continued, but the excavation of the total floor of the building has not been carried out, as a large part is underneath adjoining buildings. The most representative both religious and civil buildings were located on the top of the theatre. We have the old cathedral, which is partly on some remains of the theater. Los columbarios. The Columbaria, situated on the outskirts of the city, as established by the laws of ancient Roma, consisted of a series of tombs, mostly associated with cremation rather than burial rituals. The ashes were deposited in an urn, which was then placed inside a niche. These resembled the niches of pigeon lofts, hence the name, which is derived from the Latin word columba, or pigeon. In the Varela Gardens there are recreations based on the remains of an old Venetian and Roman necropolis from the period of the 6th century BC to the 4th century AD, which were found there. It is believed that the amphitheatre was situated very near to the Columbaria above the Puerta Tierra area. The system for channeling water is still visible in the Plaza de Asdrubal. It was brought from the spring of Temple in Jerez de la Frontera. As we go deeper into the city, we come across the remains of what is known as the Casa del Obispo, the bishop's house. A place to which Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Romans, Arabs and Christians have given different uses since the 8th century BC. In the Plaza Topete stands a sculpture which pays homage to Lucius Ionius Moderatus, known as Columea. He settled in Italy where he dedicated himself to his biggest passion, agriculture. His De Re Rustica is the most comprehensive and interesting treatise on agronomics, written in ancient times.
He who wants to dedicate himself to agriculture must know that he must previously have the support of these three factors, knowledge of the subject, the possibility of making expenses, and the desire to work. Although Colomea was a man of the countryside, his place of birth, Gadis, is a typical coastal city. A little further on we come to the crossroads between Sacramento and Bari, where there are remains of an old fish salting factory from the first century BC. At the factory the fish were washed cut into pieces, covered with salt, pressed and left to macerate for approximately 20 days. The famous garum, a delicacy which was indispensable at the Roman meal table, was also processed here. A charcoal drawing depicting the city's Roman lighthouse was found on the site. In the 90s, in the salting factory that was discovered in the old Andalusia theatre, a graffiti, a charcoal drawing was found on the walls themselves of the salt basin, which caused great stir as it seemed to represent a lighthouse. We do have reference from old writers from Arab times mainly that talk about the large Roman lighthouse, which would be where the San Sebastian castle is now located. This gave rise to a debate in the scientific world as to what this drawing represented. Without any doubt whatsoever, it is clearly the drawing of a lighthouse, the staircase, the access door, the fire smoking at the top. But there are different points of view. I personally think that it is not the Roman lighthouse of ancient Cadiz, as the writers mention a lighthouse of less than 11 structures, and this seems to be an 11 structure lighthouse. The sea voyage between Cadiz and Ostia, Rome's port, took approximately seven days. During this period, maritime transport was safer, faster and cheaper than land transport. Gades was an important city in olden times. All the old writers such as Pomponio Mella or Estrabon mention the city as one of the most important in the Roman world. What conclusions can we draw? That it was a commercial city. Estrabon said that most of its inhabitants lived in the sea which is a way of saying that they travelled a great deal and traded continuously, and that, thanks to this, it was a rich city. We also know this by the archaeology we have here in the Cadiz Museum. The materials are sometimes of exceptional quality and great richness. A funerary decorative set of elements from a tomb in Escalfo Street, unique in the Roman Empire, without any exaggeration whatsoever, is made up by rock crystal glass of great interest. In general, in its excavations and its findings, the entire city shows remains of its past economic power. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the city entered into a period of decline as the result of successive occupation by two cultures which had no special affinity with the sea, the Visigoths and the Muslims.
en 1262, en 1262 King Alfonso X the Wise seized the city, and in 1493, Cadiz was incorporated into the crown of Castile. Christopher Columbus sailed from Cadiz on his second and fourth voyages to the Americas. This led to an uninterrupted traffic of galleons and fleets, which reached its height in the 18th century, when the Casa de Contratación, the government office which controlled trade with the Americas, was moved from Seville to Cadiz. Una de la Constitución de 1812, conocida popularmente como la Pepe, Cadiz was the birthplace of the Constitution of 1812, which was popularly known as la Pepa, the highest expression of the Cortes, or Parliament, which was established in the city from 1810 to 1813. In the 19th century, the independence of the Latin American countries led to a serious decline and various measures to revive the city's economy had to be put in place. As a result of its colorful past, the city now boasts numerous places of historic and tourist interest. Examples of this are the typical watchtowers constructed between the 17th and 18th centuries, which were used as vantage points by local merchants to control the arrival of new vessels. The tallest of them all is Torre Tavira, which is 45 meters high and built in Baroque style. Today it houses a camera obscura, which uses lenses and mirrors to project real-time images of the city on a screen. The cathedral, with its museum and historic archive, the Museum of the Cortes, the walls, and some of the fortifications complete the sightseeing tour of the city. Nature lovers should not miss the Bahia de Cadiz Natural Park, a spectacular coastal area where sea, land and sky come together to form a uniquely beautiful landscape. The yearly carnival is perhaps Cadiz's most eagerly awaited event. During its celebration, the whole city seems to come to a standstill, and streets fill with thousands of visitors. One of the highlights are the choirs and groups of singers, who show the ingenuity and sense of humor of the locals, with especially composed songs whose lyrics ridicule public events and famous figures. There is also an official carnival competition whose final, which is held at the Grand Teatro Fire, lasts well into the small hours in the morning. Despite its great fame, the carnival is not the only deeply rooted celebration in Cadiz. There are also religious festivities and special events such as Easter week, Corpus Christi, the burning of Los Juanillos, 
the Ramon de Carantha football trophy, the fiestas in honor of the patron saint, the Virgin of El Rosario, and the Tosantos, all of which reflect the true essence of the city. The character and maritime tradition of this Atlantic city is imprinted on its gastronomy, which includes a wide range of seafood dishes, often garnished with piranaca, a tomato, pepper and onion salad. The most popular of these include a tuna dish known as atun in ceboyao, the pargo a la rotenia, baby shrimps in batter, a variety of rice and seafood dishes, and a local stew or puchero. Traditional crafts are an essential feature of the cultural heritage of Cadiz, with bookbinding, ceramics, embroidery, cigar making, and leather goods being just some of them, whilst the production of religious sculptures is notable for its variety and for its own distinctive character. Despite its situation on the southernmost tip of the peninsula, Cadiz has an excellent network of communications. Jerez Airport is approximately 30 minutes away and there are direct rail connections with Madrid, Barcelona and Seville. The latter is only an hour and 20 minutes away on the AP4 toll road. Poet Rafael Alberti recalled the beauty of the city in one of his verses. I looked at you from afar without understanding myself. Oh, Cadiz, on the shore of your sea. Gadir, Gadiz, Cadiz. Despite its changing name, the essence of the city has always remained the same the light, the ocean, and faraway ports. The immensity of the Atlantic opens out towards the west, but it almost seems as if you could touch America with the tips of your fingers. Cadiz marks the end of the Via Augusta, the last post on the Roman Beatica route. It has been a long journey, but Cadiz continues to offer the magnificent rewards it once offered to the legionnaires, travelers and traders who traveled on the Via Augusta 2,000 years ago.